Alex, you work at GIZ Evaluation Unit. GIZ is one of the largest implementers of development aid worldwide. I understand that throughout next year, you're going to conduct a comprehensive review of the entire rural development portfolio of GIZ. Maybe you can give us a little bit of an idea what kind of projects there are, how many of them, the volume, and so forth. Oh, you're absolutely right. 2013, 2014, uh, our evaluation unit is looking at rural development. Um, since 2006, we have been looking at um, a sector each year uh, in which GIZ implements projects. So, for instance, we're just in the stages of finalizing our uh, primary education cycle and um, are, have just started our rural development cycle. And um, in the course of 2014, we'll be able to um, provide findings on the evaluation of a total of 13 projects. It's not the entire um, portfolio, but it's um, a good sample of that portfolio. We've got projects in countries covering all um, regions in which GIZ works. That is Western Africa, Eastern Africa. We've got a project, uh, an evaluation in Brazil, Southeast Asia, Central Asia, Central America, India, Vietnam. So regionally it's very broad, but we also cover a number of topics um, or subsectors, if you will. Um, that includes um, value chain promotion, natural resource management. We have a big watershed management project in India. Um, and we've got a, a project on climate change adaptation. So um, quite a broad range of issues or topics that we're looking at, some more classical uh, rural development projects and some which are more, say, cutting edge, more innovative um, in terms of, that, in terms of um, working on rather young issues um, in the discourse. Most of the projects are, that we're looking at are funded by the German Ministry of uh, Economic um, Cooperation and Development, BMZ, but we also have one project in the sample that's financed by the German Environment uh, Ministry, and we have one project that's financed by, or that was financed by the Swiss Development Corporation, SDC, and we've got one project that is co-financed um, by IFAD. So um, quite a broad range, um, but focusing primarily uh, on, on BMZ. Uh, in terms of volume, that's one question you asked me. Um, most of the projects um, in the sample have a volume of um, beyond 2 million euros in total. You've been already conducting a number of uh, evaluations. Where's the, where's the market going? What's the general tendency, what, what do you say, in terms of sustainability and effectiveness of the project? I wouldn't want to be uh, too sure uh, um, beforehand, um, but what we can say is that over the course of the years, um, our evaluation system has worked with a fairly standardized um, process. So um, we've always looked at the OECD DAC evaluation criteria, relevance, effectiveness, impact, efficiency, sustainability, and we've applied that set of criteria to all of the sectoral cycles that we've had. So um, in the past years, we've seen that there's a tendency a certain kind of recurring pattern, if you will, um, in as far as sustainability um, is usually rated quite weak, whereas effectiveness, i.e. the degree to which a project reaches its objectives, is usually uh, fairly uh, rated fairly good. In terms of sustainability, obviously you will take on some measurements to actually crank, crank that up in the future. but. In terms of uh, visibility, in terms of uh, publicizing the results, is there anything that you're thinking of how to bring in some feedback in there? Absolutely. I think that is a very, um, it's, a, it's a central feature of our evaluation system in GIZ um, that we look at a management response. So basically what happens is that after the 13 evaluations have been concluded, we then commission 
a consultant or a university um, to carry out a synthesis. And in this synthesis, we um, try to tease out success factors or factors for failure, lessons learned, good practices that can inform programming in the sector as a whole. The synthesis report also contains recommendations um, um, as to how to improve programming and uh, what would have to happen in the organization to improve rural development work in this case. So what we do is then, um, we then, or as an evaluation unit, we organize um, um, a process of stakeholder dialogue in-house with colleagues in the regional departments, with colleagues in the sectoral department, to discuss the findings and recommendations and to jointly come up with a response of the organization to those findings and recommendations. So we can um, accept a recommendation or we can, also reject a, um, we can also reject a recommendation. What is important is that the evaluation findings stimulate um, reflection and discussion in the organization of what do we have to do to improve our performance. Once we have agreed upon um, what, what we do with the recommendations as an organization, we prepare a document that is then put forward to our top management. So top management actually then discusses and decides the implications of the evaluation findings, and then there's a feedback loop down to the operational um, departments again for implementing the management response. So this kind of system, if you will, is our, we call it the triple loop learning process, learning in the project, learning in the organizational units, and then learning as an organization as a whole is what we use to stimulate um, learning from evaluation findings so that the evaluation has an impact on the organization and we then eventually improve our performance. I'm sure that uh, top management is not all, as you mentioned before, you want to take that up to a larger scale and uh, where does the Global Donut platform come in? What we want to do now with this cycle is we want to use the evaluations to stimulate a dialogue with other development partners and other development agencies. So the evaluations do not only serve the purpose of accountability, um, we want the evaluations to also serve the purpose um, of uh, learning, of m stimulating mutual dialogue. And um, basically the Global Donor Platform is a brilliant opportunity um, to get our findings out into the uh, technical community or in the community of rural development practitioners. So um, we really hope that um, members uh, of the Global Donor Platform um, find, um, find the evaluation results interesting, that they will take them up, that they will discuss them, maybe they will come back to GIZ with questions. Um, that would be our wish. Um, then we believe the evaluations uh, will be useful and uh, will have some utility. Are you thinking of summarizing these summary reports and make them much more easily accessible in terms of their length, publicizing them on the Global Donor Platform website, adding additional feedback loop? Yes, absolutely. There's different uh, kind of publications that typically grow out of such an evaluation cycle. Um, there is obviously the um, we, the evaluation reports for each of the 13 evaluations and there's a summary report, a five-pager, which is uh, already always on the GIZ website. Um, and what we also always do is then we also publish the uh, synthesis report um, together with a, uh, with a much shorter version um, uh, in the format of a brochure, if you will, um, so that it's also broken down uh, for uh, say more the more general development scene, um, and um, uh, in addition, we are always absolutely open um, to trying out new formats. So basically, a summary uh, of each evaluation in a few paragraphs, or a good practice collection, or maybe a reflection of what are the lessons learned for rural development in a post 2015 setting. Um, all those kind of publications uh, are absolutely uh, possible, and uh, I think we are in the discussion, in the, in the process of discussing what kind of publication yields the best traction or the best visibility.
Can you tell us a little bit something about what it means that you work with independent consultants when you conduct the evaluations? You know, the evaluation unit in GIZ is, in, in, is an independent evaluation unit uh, in as far as we are independent from the operational departments. Um, however, we add another layer of independence to these evaluations in as far as we um, hire um, external consultants to carry out the evaluation and the evaluation report with findings and recommendations represents the opinion of the consultant. So it's not the finding or the recommendation, the opinion of the evaluation unit. And we take great care in uh, protecting the independence uh, of the consultants. I wanted to touch on another issue with you, Alex. It's the, the matter of how to learn from failures as opposed to learning from the best practices. Um, we hear more and more about uh, that we can learn a whole lot more from failures. But I believe that your consultants will probably have uh, quite some difficulty in getting that information out of the project. Nobody really wants to talk about that thing. The truth be told, uh, not every project manager is happy being evaluated, for sure. Um, but um, I think, in my view, it all comes down to fairness. So really, it's, our evaluations are designed um, in such a way that consultants should not go out and then say thumbs up or thumbs down, basically. So mm -hmm. we, make great, we take great care in um, producing a methodology that, in which it is very clearly spelled out and made transparent what data underlies the judgments that consultants make. So we draw on monitoring, um, monitoring data and also do our own primary data collection, and we try to make it very transparent. Um, that's one thing. The other thing that is, of course, uh, important in terms of fairness is that we need to recognize that project managers do not influence um, every factor that, um, in, that has an impact on project success. I mean, that is, um, that's a truism, basically, but in our evaluations, we need to make sure that framework conditions, be it political turmoil, um, market shocks, extreme weather conditions, anything really that can influence negatively upon project success is adequately addressed and then taken into consideration when making a judgment. But maybe a very basic point, um, nobody is going to be punished or sanctioned for a critical evaluation result or critical evaluation finding. The evaluations are designed in a way to stimulate learning for everybody involved. Um, and that's what we really try to do, and that's what our system is designed to do. Yeah, thank you very much. So we're looking very much forward to having your material on our website as well. And maybe you want to say one or two words of what you hope the input would be. We really hope that there will be some interesting, insightful, intriguing findings that uh, all your members, um, you know, can use. And um, so, thank you very much, and bye-bye.